Good morning. It is a lovely spring morning. And if you notice, I've got crazy things going on with the light from outside. I've got my spring decor here on my table. And um, I'm just enjoying every moment. Now, today, we are going to create a wreath. And uh, I want this wreath to hang on one of the doors that's inside of my kitchen. And, um, it, you know, after you see white door after white door after white door, they get boring. And so I want a little something extra. At Christmas, I have all the doors, all the doors have wreaths. And uh, once Christmas is over, that's where my sadness comes in. Because then I start to remove all of those things to take the, the Santa and all that greenery out. And then it just seems so blank. So, I think what I'm going to do is to add something special. And I want, you know, last week I did the, I'll turn around so you can see, I did my pantry doors. And you can see those pantry doors right there behind me. And uh, there's the wreath I'm going to be working on right there. I'll tell you my process and what I did with that. And, uh, but for uh, last week, we dealt with the pantry doors. And I think they turned out beautifully. And so um, I really like those. But the door, this is not the door where this wreath is going to hang. This is just a door where I'm going to work on it. I want it's at a good level. The light seems to be good in this particular spot for me to be able to do the filming. So that's the reason why it's here. So. Let's get started with designing a wreath. I don't want, it's not going to cost a lot. I picked up a few flowers. And in fact, uh, most of the greenery is going to come from other wreaths that I've done that um, I had extras with. And I'm just going to start adding those in. And I think by the time it's all over with, you'll never know. So let's get to it. All right, now, this particular wreath is one that I used about three years ago, and it has been sitting in my attic. So in order to resurrect the wreath, I had to, uh, of course it would have been brown, but I decided that I wanted to add a little bling to it. So what I did was that I had some old uh, silver spray paint, and I decided that I would add some spray paint to it. So that's exactly what I did. So now what I'm doing is just flipping it over because I think the other side looks, this side looks a little better. So if you see things occasionally falling off of it, just know I've got a pile of little pieces of grapevine because if you've ever done anything with grapevine, you know it's messy. So uh, it, it's, it's just messy on its own. But especially when it's an older wreath. But you know, never throw away anything because grapevine wreaths last a very, very, very long time. So we are going to be resurrecting this particular grapevine wreath and uh, making it in to something beautiful. We're gonna make it last much longer than it was intended. So let's see what we can do. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is to put together a bow. So, let's get that bow made. First, I want to show you this stack of uh, burlap that I have. And uh, what I've done, I just had just plain burlap. Let's see if I can get a piece of it. It was one of those that you buy at Walmart. It's all rolled up like this. And uh, so what I did was that I cut it into six inch strips six inch strips so that I could use it. They did not have any regular burlap ribbon uh, that was this wide, which they normally do. And they had it in purple, they had it in teal, they had all kinds of colors, but they didn't have just plain burlap. And so um, I bought this for probably five bucks and uh, cut it into the strips that I want. Now, if you have worked with burlap before, you know that burlap 
unravels. And that's just a part of the nature of the beast. That's what it does. And uh, it, that's what gives it its character. And I'm going to call it character. Sometimes it's annoying as I'll get out. And so uh, we are going to work with this character. So when I put this on the wreath, I promise you, there are going to be strings. I can see the strings coming. But that's also going to give it some interesting looks. You'll be able to see the frame on the ends. And um, you'll be able to, um, um, you're going to have frame here this way as well as you're probably going to have some frame here so don't if you decide to go with um i'm trying to be as frugal as possible for this particular wreath and so if you're going to be frugal better word if you're going to be uh sometimes what i call cheap <laughs> and you didn't want to drive all over the place to try to find just a particular six inch burlap then you will use the strip that we have here and you're just going to deal with the frame it's okay it's a wreath and it's going to hang it's going to have its own character and personality all right so what we are going to do with this is we are going to just stick it into the wreath and add more depth and dimension to the wreath watch now, you're going to see here that I have started just tucking the burlap into the wreath. So, that's one piece that I cut off. And you can decide how long you want it. You know, how much you want, wherever you want to end. And I don't know if you can see, but I've got a few strings that are right here. I'm just going to grab my scissors and clip, clip, give it a little haircut, and it's going to be fine. So, here's my end. Now, I can tell you, I'm purposely going to fray this end because I like that. So, I'm going to take this and I'm going to tuck it right here. Now, sometimes we're working with burlap, sometimes it can, it will uh, do little funny things. I want this to kind of hang this way. And how long you make it, you can always trim. Those are things that you have the option of doing. I'm going to take this in. I'm going to uh, tuck it in here. And you just have to work with it because you are dealing with burlap and, and grapevines, and you know grapevines catch on everything. And burlap is just one of those types of material that says, uh, go ahead, catch on me. I'm good with that. So we're going to work with that. And I need to do a little flipping here. Okay. I'm going to take this. I think I'll leave it out there a little bit. Let's get it under there. Get it started. And it makes a mess. So if you're one who doesn't like mess, you know, this may not be the style wreath for you. Now, basically what we're doing is that we're kind of giving it uh, a poofy look without the poof. So, once we put the flowers in and uh, everything in, you're gonna, it's going to fade into the background. But for now, get that in there. You can see stuff dropping off the wreath. That's because we're pulling the burlap through and forcing it to come in between there where normally it wouldn't be. Okay. And for now, I'm going to take that piece and bring it up just a little bit, poof it out, and I'm going to let this piece just kind of hang there for the moment. Now, we still got something to do over here. I think what I'll do, I want it to kind of cross, so I'm going to take this in that direction. And I'm going to push this up because I want to crisscross. Now, 
Now, the cool thing about this is, is that we can change it with the season. I mean, it's burlap. So, in the summer, we can do something fun with the burlap. And, uh, you know, as we add more summer flowers to it. Okay, there we go. So, you've got a little crisscross. I'll do something there. I'm going to take this in. I'm going to bring it through there. That's a nice little opening. You'll see the openings come where you can just feed it through. And the only part that I really secured was at the very beginning. And to be honest with you, I probably really didn't even have to do it there. But I did, just for my own sanity. And yes, you're going to have little, here we are, little pieces. That's okay. Just going to take them out, but don't get crazy because you don't want to pull it all out. Okay, now, so, we're going to take this. We're going to feed it back through there. How poofy you make it, if that's up to you. But I want mine a little full, even though this is a pretty good size wreath. But I want it full as far as the grapevine is concerned. Okay, I've got a piece there. And I'm going to go back through and add more. I'm going to line things up a little over the top sometimes. So there we go there. Bring it in through, and we can flip and do whatever we need to do or want to do as we're taking it around. But we can just leave it on natural and uh, bring these little pieces in and out. Now, there's a little piece, and we can decide how we want him to work. Now, if we decide that we want to, whoo, that was a long one. If we decide that we want to add more and continue a second layer, then we can certainly start to bring more into the center and go around again. But for now, I think this is all I'm going to do until I get the flowers. Now, I'm going to get my scissors and I am going to do a little trimming. Now try to bring you up close so you can see, not making you dizzy, I'm going to bring you up close so you can see the strings. You see where the strings are along there? That may drive you crazy and if it does, just like I said, grab a pair of scissors and string, string, strings here and um, you'll see some strings every now and then. like. Here's some strings there, but you'll see, I just kind of tucked it into those little parts. And uh, once we get our bow on there, you're going to start to see it fill in. Now, I wanted to add more light to, the, to this work area where we're going to be, and I want to make sure that I'm able to give you a good view of what we're doing. So if you see me adjusting the camera, just a little bit. Uh, it's really more about your seeing what I'm doing rather than your seeing me at this point. Now, I have uh, a dollar tape measure that I got from Joanne years ago. And uh, I use this tape measure for everything. Now, do I always measure? No. But because I know my work surfaces, I usually um, that's the reason why I don't usually measure. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put something here to kind of hold on to it. The only reason I'm doing this is because I just want to give you an idea of how I'm going to do this particular bow. Now the first thing I want to do is to, and I'm going to flip this over, is that I want a strip that is going to be I'm going to take it to 
Actually, I'm going to take this to 13 inches. And at 13, I'm going to fold it. I'm going to run it back the other way to the end. Let me see if you can see what I'm doing. Make sure you're there. Okay, can you, hopefully you can see both ends. I'm taking it to 13. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to flip it over. I'm flipping it over. I'm going to take it down to the other end, holding tight, making sure it's snug. And at that end, I'm going to flip it over. Then take it down, run your hand down it, and flip. Run your hand down to the next end, and you're flipping it over and over. I'm going to stop for just a second to make sure, because sometimes this kind of gets crazy. That's one, and I got one, two loops. Three loops on that end, and I've got one, two loops on this end. That gives us five loops. Now, I think I'm actually going to take it one more time around. So, I'm going to run it down. I'm going to flip. Okay, trying to keep it there. Keep this here. I'm going to throw that down on the floor so it doesn't make me crazy. And I'm going to be careful not to crunch it because you want to keep your 13 inches. Okay. So we have, you can count them, one, two, three, four loops on this side, and we should have three on this one. One, two, three loops, okay, and, okay, four on this side, and let's see how many is on this side. You know, it really doesn't matter. We're going to cut here. And I think, you know what? I'm going to flip it back. No, I'm going to leave it there. We're good. We're going to flip right there. The reason I'm hesitating is that I'm looking at the end of this. This is a Walmart brand of ribbon. And guess what? That's it. So there's no need in cutting just this little strip off. So I am going to take that and I'm just going to flip it over. And I'm not going to worry about how long it is because actually what I'll probably end up doing is just dovetailing it in the end. Alright, so to make sure that you can see, now I'm going to pick this up. See, it's all together. And this is a good stiff ribbon. It's kind of a black and a cream. I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it in half. Now you may have made bows like this before. I do them pretty often just because I like uh, how quickly they come together. And I'm going to put my finger in there. Now the effort is not to cut the finger. Get the best pair of scissors, and I'm not sure this is the best pair. But what we're going to do is that we're going to cut, I'm going to say about, because of the width, this, this ribbon is about two and a half inches. I'm going to cut in about three quarters of an inch on this side, three quarters of an inch on this side. Now, do you need to measure just to know where three quarters of an inch is? That brings us about to that second um, strip. And here, it's about one, two in as well. One, two. Okay, so let's get the scissors in there. And we're going to cut in. And you really don't want to go too terribly far. The reason for that is because you want your bow to hold up when you're manipulating it. Okay, I'm going to the other side. Put my finger in there. Now this is probably the hardest part of this whole thing. And right at that second mark, I'm going to stop. 
this up. So when I open this up, you should be able to see I've cut here and there. Let's see if you can see that. I cut here and I cut there. Okay? And the good thing about this bow is that I can lay it down and it stays right there. Now, I'm going to get a piece of actually two zip ties and I'll tell you why. Alright, I have two medium sized zip ties. These are not the little baby ones that I use sometimes on my wreath. And what I'm going to take, what I'm going to do is to take the first zip tie and I'm going to fasten it right in that cut. And you want it pretty tight. Now at this point, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to cut it yet, you know, I won't trim it yet, just because, and I'm going to leave it on this side, I think, and I'm going to work this way, since we have our ribbon here. Now, this is our little eye piece already. I'm going to take it, fold it, and dovetail it. So, we know that's going to be dovetailed. All right. Now, we have two. Let me bring you down a little closer. All right. So, you, we've got two. We've got our two ends. There they are right there. Now, what you're going to do, we're going to start on one side. We're going to pull out one, the first one. And we're going to pull it forward. And now, because we have used uh, uh, zip tie, they are strong, really strong. The second, we're going to pull it back. And then the third, we'll just kind of pull it forward. And you can yank on it. That's the good thing about a zip tie. Now, this piece, because that's the odd piece, we're going to fold it. We're going to dovetail it, and we're going to push that back as well. And you can just really work with it because you have enough opening. So what I've done is that I've given, in fact, I could even pull that that way. But we've got some going to the front. We've got some going to the back. We've got a bow here. This has nice wire in it. So we can start to see our bow form. That's on that side. Bring it over to the other side. The first one comes toward you. Pull towards you. Pull the rest back. Like you're twisting. Kind of a twisting motion. The next one, you know, is going to go back. I like kind of pulling them all in the same direction. But there we go. Going to go back. The next one is going to come forward towards you. And that second one, of course, will be in the back. Now, you'll take your hand in and round those bows out, those little loops out. And you can start to see your bow develop. Okay, now you're thinking, okay, are you finished? No, I'm not finished yet. So, we need a little something, something else to go along with this. And I thought, since we're working with burlap, I did find in my stash uh, uh, a pack, pack of, they call it a wired burlap ribbon, but it's not your everyday ribbon, and it is wired, so that's nice. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make, remember we made these at 13. I'm going to make these at 15, and I'm only going to do three. So, watch. All right, let's get them over here. I'm going to drop that for just a moment on the floor. 
Now, extending it to 15, that's going to be my fold point. Fold it 15. Okay, work this out so it looks right. Okay, so we're going to lay it down. Can you see? We've laid our 15 down. Okay, pull it. Bring it over. That would be two loops. Lay down flat. And pull it. Bring it over. And this one, two. So that gives us one loop here. One. Two loops there. And I think that'll be just enough. So we're going to cut this right here. Let that drop. Okay, we're going to do what we did before fold it in half. I'm putting my finger in there at the halfway point. I'm going to cut in about three fourths of an inch on that side, flip it. Do about three fourths of an inch on this side. And if you think that you didn't quite get enough, then you can go back in. Now, remember I told you we had two, two twist ties. Now this twist tie, I'm going to turn this one over. And I'm going to attach this to the back of the other bow. Now when you look down in there, you're going to see where all that came together. I'm going to slide this right underneath. It's not going to be easy, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work with it and slide it in. I'm going to come across. And just have to keep working, keep wiggling and working. It'll get through. see where their where their piece is. Oh, okay. There he is. So we can get in there. So where it's gonna come out. I feel it. Okay, so there he is, right there. Now, so what we'll do is that we're going to lay this into that piece on the back. And that's where we're going to fasten. Now you know why we didn't trim because we wanted to be able to find what we were doing. Now let me get my wire cutters and we'll be ready to move on. Okay, I can trim and I'm going to trim the other one if I fold it over and get right there where we um, brought that together without cutting anything else. Okay, so those pieces are done. You clean up a little bit. Oop, dropping. Okay. Now, we're going to do the same thing. Here's that extra little flap. Now, because you know what? Because this is a burlap, I think I'm going to just do a little cut, a little side cut, a little angled cut on that end. All right, that's ready. Okay, so... Let's do front back, little twist. Okay, that one's there because really what this is doing is that it's just adding a little more depth to the bow. You're not really trying to add more color. See how that's going to look once it's all together. So we're going to take this side. And we have one going forward, one we're going to pull up, and one we have back. And 
it gives us a little extra to our bow. And then you just fluff. Now, of course, we're going to have to do more fluffing once all of this is on the, on the wreath. But for now, we're able to see where we're going. So, we have a little, little lace, a little rustic burlap. We've got some black and white stripes. It's very neutral and calming. And uh, we're going to be able to add this to our wreath. So I'm going to back you up just a little. So I'm taking the right direction. There we go. You can see our bow. All right, so we're ready. And like I said, I'm leaving these little ends just the way they are because eventually they're going to fill in on our wreath. So I'm going to take you over to the wreath and we're going to find a spot for it. Ribbon. I fed a zip tie into the back of it, and right here where I brought these two little pieces, that is the exact perfect spot for this particular ribbon. So I'm going to run this zip tie through and into my wreath. That's where it's coming out, and I'm going to fasten it securely. I'm not going to fasten it too tight because I want to be able to make adjustments once I get it there. So how high or how low I want it. And plus, I don't want it to be so tight that it literally cuts through the, the grapevine. Okay, so it's there. We've got our little burlap pieces there. We've got our black and white. But it's tight enough that it's not going anywhere. And uh, we have... Uh, other pieces. We're just going to fluff for a minute so we can get all those colors in. Got our piece there of lace. Now, you know, I could always go back and add more of the lace in if I wanted to, but I don't think I'm going to need to. I think that's just a sufficient amount and it's tight enough. So I'm going to get my wire cutters and I'm going to cut that and then we're going to be ready to add the green ring. Alrighty, we're ready to add some greenery. So I'm going to back you up just a little bit so you can see where I'm starting because I want the, we're going to work at an angle first. Make sure I get it all in there. Okay, so let's work at an angle. So I'm, I'm starting with some vines that I had. And purposely, I have um, I have these vines that are well wired, and I'm going to put them in. I'll go back later and start to uh, tuck in uh, little bits and pieces of glue. But for now, I just kind of want to see where I'm going to take it. So I'm going to put in a piece of vine there. And I like for it to stand out. I want it to look like it's living. And I'm going to take a piece of vine. And you know I'm all about the ivy. So I'm taking some vine here. And I like to work in threes. So I've got another somewhat smaller piece. But I'm going to tuck in this way. So that's going to give us our three, our one, our two, and our three. Now, thinking whatever you do to this side, you need to do a little extra something up here. So we're going to take this one and we're going to add it in here. Way. There we go. Now, then you have to 
stand back and kind of look at it. Okay, I like that. I like the way that's, that's going to open up very well. And that's going to take up a lot of space. Now, I could, if I wanted to bring it in, obviously, if you don't want to go quite that big, you could stop and uh, or just do two pieces over here. Or actually, and I may do this just because it's on the door, I think I'll switch this one. That's the advantage of not gluing in at the beginning, is that I'm going to put the little, the shorter one here. But I do want it to, to give some hang. And I'm going to take this one and work it this way. And you know nothing's ever straight, so you have to play with them because nature does not grow in a straight line. So there we go. We've got our base. I like that. I like the way that starts. But I think I need one more smaller one maybe coming down off of the bow. So let me get one more piece. Okay, so let's take this one and I'm actually going to go underneath. start to add some more. Remember, this is a very natural and uh, wreath. It will have very, you know, have some color, but not a lot. I am going to add in a little bit of onion grass here. a little extra and adds an extra dimension and uh, open this up I want some of that onion grass down here onion grass, let's see, I have onion grass up there, and give it that pop of something extra and wild, and I have some cattails, and I think I'll put the cattails down here. I have quite a few, so I'll add some cattails in here. Tails in, back and forth, so we have the in and out, we have a very three-dimensional approach. I'm opening this up. And of course, I'll put this vine back in a minute. Any cattails here? Or it may be that I don't need them at all. So we'll play with that. I think once I get this in and secure, I think I'm going to intermingle some of these cattails into the line. There we go. And do the same here. Pulling, which will do to help to pull some of those forward and back. And if we wanted to, we could add another cattail back there to give it a little extra. 
add a third one just to give it a little extra. Mm. Okay, I think I like that. Mm, the grass, I'm not so sure about. We'll work on that in just a moment. Now it's time to think about some color. Remember, I want it very natural and uh, I'm thinking I need a little something else. Okay, I added in two little bushes of lavender from Dollar Tree. And what I did, after I got them in and secure, then I started to go back in and give each branch some bend. Because, you know, in nature, nothing is straight. I did the same thing with the grass, which I was almost about to pull the grass out. But now that I gave it a little mm and added a little bend, it is starting to look more natural. So later I'll go back in and work on the work on the um, bow and get it placed in very comfortably. And then that portion is going to be done. Well, down at the bottom, I added in some lilac as well. And you can see where I intermingled it and it just looks very natural so I'm liking that so it's time to add uh, a little more you're ready to uh, glue down the parts and I know that you know how to do that but what I'm going to do is to take my glue gun and go deep within these little parts and glue each and every flower in so that when the wind blows the uh, flowers would not come apart because you know some of the flowers were in little larger groups whereas some were individual and those individual flowers certainly will come out so we're going to take care of that today and once that's done this wreath will be ready to hang